I'm sitting here with Marilyn Emery, a keynote speaker at the European Meeting of Cybernetics and System Research. Her field of study of research is open system theory. Um, Marilyn, since 1972, the European Meeting on Cybernetics and Systems Research has been taking place here in Austria. Have you joined before, or is this your first time? No, it's my first time. Your first time? Yes. Uh, what are your first impressions after the first two days? Ah, uh -huh. absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, I've never met such a diverse field of study in my life before. <laughs> okay. Um, how did you get to come to this meeting? Oh, I was invited. You were invited. Um, so, your research topic is open system theory. Yep. Could you just briefly describe open system theory, what that is? Yes, basically um, what it means is that um, you treat all systems, organizations, communities, what have you, as having boundaries which are open to um, an external social field. Okay, so okay. we don't we don't treat people or organizations as closed systems. We don't just look inside them. We look at them in relationship to you know that big field of ideas and values and whatever that surrounds you. So there's constant exchange from one system to the environment. Absolutely. Between systems. I mean, system and environment are constantly changing each other. Yes. So. If, if you only look within the system, you miss most of the huge influences that are actually you know, being forced on people. Yeah. And I think this is what our society makes. So what would, how would you see the world's today's society from an open system's point of view? How would I see today's society? Yeah. Well, it depends where you look, but um, I mean, when you look at the, the social field that's out there, what you see is you see a whole range of things in conflict going in different directions, and people are subject to that field of forces. Um, I mean, um, it's not the healthiest of environments that we live in at the moment. Um, it's characterized basically by high levels of relevant uncertainty, and that's um, makes it very unhealthy and very unpleasant because people don't like living with high levels of uncertainty. Okay. Um. So I mean, one of one of the things that we're actually trying to do is to stabilize that environment and bring it back so it's a much more stable and healthy environment for people to live in. To bring it back to stability to make it more yeah. healthy. Um, what does indicate this, this unhealthiness of, the, uh, of our society? What do you see this in the global problems? Or? Oh, we've got global problems running out of batteries. Running everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the biggest one we're facing is climate change. Yeah. And we're not even getting on top of it yet. There's a huge amount of work needs to be done. And from your point of view, we can use open system theory to get ahead the problems of Absolutely. environmental change. Or Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. In fact, um, some of my colleagues and I in Australia are working on that right now. And what, what can people, what can one person do about it? How can we apply open system theory in our lives to make this change? Uh, get together with other people. That's the first thing you have to do. The basic idea behind it. I mean, I, I don't think we should think in terms of isolated individuals. We should really start thinking now about how do we get communities organised? Because at the moment they're just aggregates of individuals and families, they're not really communities anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing we have to do. And we also have to, um, if, you do, if you're talking about climate change, I mean, a lot of organisations are just ignoring it. And that's got to change as well. Organisations have got to start working with the communities in which they're embedded. And start, you know, I mean, when they come together, they can be extremely powerful. Yeah, there are always people out there that 
don't really care about the environment. And I think this this is. Oh, they're gonna care pretty soon. They're gonna care pretty soon. And this <laughs> this is the this should be the motivation behind it, I guess, to to activate those people. Because I think it's only working this, if everyone participates in discussions in communities. Oh, absolutely. But um, I mean, the first thing we have to do is start building cohesive communities. Because as I said, they pretty well disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, so certainly in, the, in industrialized countries like Australia, yeah. um, there's an urgent need to bring communities together and say, you know, what are you going to do about the future? Get on to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we're speaking about communities, um, what's your opinion about social networking services on the internet? Is community building there more? Uh, is it are communities building faster on the internet? Are the systems there more adaptive? Is adaption um, going faster in social networking communities on the internet? Um, I would hesitate to call them communities. Okay. Um, I'm still in two minds about this because these phenomena are very, very new. I mean, they those are, those you've been speaking, yeah. and we really don't know yet what the long-term effects are going to be. I mean, I know that they're brilliant for some forms of organising, but I doubt that having 530 friends <laughs> <laughs> is really a sign of help. Yeah. Because, I mean, I know a lot of really isolated individuals tap into their, you know, their computers. Yeah, there are these And um, where is the real human, you know, support and contact? They are isolated in their social environments, but they are active on the social networks and the internet. Yeah, I know, but we don't know what the real effects we don't know are yet. going to be. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Marilyn. Um, you lived in an Aboriginal camp when you were a child. I did. Yeah, uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, how has that influenced you in your research? What has that influenced you? Oh yeah, it changes everything. Um, you just look at things very differently. So um, it changes everything you do. Is there probably something we could learn from the Aboriginals oh. to? apply to our society, that's possible to apply to our society? Absolutely. I mean, they were highly cooperative societies. And I mean, if you look in Australia, for example, they kept the place in good shape for over 60,000 years. We're just about wrecked the joint in 200. Right? <laughs> that's a good point of view. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, we have a huge amount to learn from all of our Indigenous people. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. So, Marilyn, thank you for joining our interview session. Hey, how are you? And, yeah, we're very happy to have you here. Your mm -hmm. keynote was pretty interesting. I was listening to it. Hey, thank yeah. you.